This is the life. It is indeed. Welcome to the motorhome. It's a multi-person vehicle. It's an MPV. Thanks so much, Tim, That's for bringing us to the, the pub from hell. The deed is done. We are now the owners of a van. Well, that alone was worth waiting for. Don't forget the eggs. There we go. Lovely. It's quite heavy now. Hello. Welcome back to the channel. I'm Richard Vobes, the Bald Explorer. Now I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, hang on a minute, Richard, you've not been putting up videos this week. And it's true, regular followers will have noticed that actually there's been a few videos missing. I normally put up four videos a week. But there's been a few changes here on the channel and I'm moving to one extra special video a week rather than lots of smaller ones. Uh, it's all going to be very exciting and I'm introducing a new members area where those people who do want that extra content can go and find it. So all of that is to come. I'll give you updates on that as it happens. Meanwhile, I'm very excited because I'm off out with the boys. Yeah, I'm going camping with the three of my great friends. So I'm very much looking forward to it. Um, I've just been getting my cool box ready. So we've got lots of food and that sort of thing. The lovely Julia is going to come up and meet us, which would be splendid. And um, I've got to sort out some clothes and of course all my photographic gear that I like to take so I can record the event and bring it to you. So I'm very excited. So I need to go and load up the old van and uh, make sure that I'm ready. Get on the road. Uh, time is ticking on. Meanwhile, for those of you who are new to the channel, you may not know what the hell I'm talking about. Well, let me remind you then very quickly something very substantial that I recently bought. In October 2020, I believe it was, I bought a like new second-hand van, a Ford Transit Custom, black, with only 17,000 miles on the clock. It was the single biggest investment, apart from my house of course, that I've ever made. Why? Well, I'm on a quest for England and Englishness. And in order to explore this beautiful country, in which I've always lived and I very much love, I knew I needed a relatively low budget means to, well, not only get about in, but to store my film gear and provide accommodation on the way. Hotels are just too impersonal and bed and breakfasts can be rather expensive. And as for tents and caravans, well, they're just not really practical. A van offered the best solution, but not a ready-made camper van, mind. No, I wanted to convert it myself to suit my individual needs. Primarily, it's a work vehicle. Being a filmmaker, I've got a fair bit of expensive gear to store, and I may need to edit videos on the road. I'll certainly need to shelter inside when the weather's inclement, or just rest and enjoy a nice cup of tea. Also, I need the van to be discreet overnight so that I can blend in with other vehicles and not draw any attention to myself. I'm not always going to stay at campsites. No, I prefer to save cash and park up, well, practically anywhere that's convenient. Over the past few months, I've adapted the inside of the van and played about with ideas. And although I wouldn't claim it's perfect yet, I'm actually quite happy with the makeover so far. So now it's time to get out there and explore. So on this perfectly lovely May evening, I'm heading to a secluded spot for my overnight camp with a couple of other van owners. And as I make my way out of my hometown, I'm thinking about the space we've selected. Will it be busy? 
I know a lot of people park there at all times of the day and go walking across the downs, or there to exercise their dogs. Will it be level? I can tell you, sleeping on a slope isn't much fun. And will our peace be disturbed by unwelcome visitors in the small hours? That's a bit of a worry. But more importantly, are there signs up prohibiting us from camping full stop? We arrive around seven o'clock in the evening at the north car park of Sisbury Ring, an Iron Age hill fort just north of Worthing in West Sussex. And fortunately, it's neither busy nor closed to overnight parking. Fabulous. Couldn't have picked a better spot. This is absolutely gorgeous. And you can see for miles, miles away. So looking east, you've got this wonderful clear sky with the rolling south downs. And then it just continues in the opposite direction. I just, you know, we couldn't have picked a better position. And it's very popular with dog walkers and visitors to, of course, the Iron Age hill fort um, up there. And the Neolithic uh, flint mines, of course, with these old farm tracks, which may be old droving routes. And then up to the north of me, we've got Chantonbury Ring here, which is a smaller Iron Age hill fort with a clump of trees that was planted by Charles Goring back in the 18th century, late 18th century. And this is just, just wonderful. The Sisbury Ring, for those who don't know it, is apparently the second largest hill fort in England. Those stunning ramparts that you see there encircling it date from around 250 BC. Ah, but far older are the Neolithic flint mines, and there's about 200 of them, that are contained within. It's now owned by the National Trust. And I can tell you, it does make a wondrous landmark to snuggle up against for the night. So this evening, I'm joined by YouTuber Richard Suggett and one of my viewers, Nigel Sadler, and his daughter, Emily. So Nigel's got his big truck, and we're gonna have a look in at that. Richard's got his people carrier, and I've got my transit. So it's gonna be a fantastic experience to sort of see, really, the differences of van life. Let's meet Nigel and find out a little bit about his his end of the camper van spectrum. Although I suppose this is technically a camp mobile, no, not a mobile home, a camper home, a mot motor home. Let's ask him. Aha. Richard, hello. Lovely Welcome. to see you. How are you? You can sleep five people in here, six if you want to be very friendly, because you can actually fit three people on the double bunk at the top. So how long have you had it? Uh, July of 21, so we're nearly coming up to a year of ownership, and I think we are the 10th owner. Oh, right. The previous owners had it for about six months. Have you had anything like this before? No. So this is a, a whole new adventure, and have you been much in it since you bought it? No, not really. <laughs> We've had one family outing of any length of time. Um, uh, it's been out on a several trips, a few long day trips with the uh, with the family, and some of us have gone off individually, like I'm, Emily and I are, are using it this weekend. Um, but uh, the wife and Emily, or the kids, have been off doing it for occasional trips out um, the end of last year. What's it like to drive? Quite fun, actually. It's big. You think you're driving a? I mean, I thought when I drove on truck. Really. Yeah, when I first got my transit, I felt I was driving a bus. Yes. Because I'd gone from a, a saloon car, and then it was big. But now I don't think it's big at all, and I guess it's a similar transition. Although from a car to that must be pretty huge. Yes. 
It, it is. I mean, reversing is certainly a thing, oh. particularly with a bike rack on the back. Have you got, have you got, have you got beep, beep, no, beep, no, 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 come on. It's a 20 year old vehicle. <laughs> right, okay. I invented that in those days. No. Um, it's like it's got mirrors on. Um, but no, it's, it's, you can stand in it, you, you can stand. cook in it, you can, you know, lie down those, in it, you can go yeah. to the toilet, you can have a shower in it. So, I mean, this is the thing. So, you've got Richard with a people carrier. Yes. Where he can put the seats down and snooze. Yes. You've got me in a transit when it was this sort of halfway house yes. and you are on, what would you say that is, um, as you say, 20 uh, years old, it's a fully fledged it's a fully motorhome, motorhome it's designed yeah. for, for living in. For living in and travelling around. It's got wherever. a fridge, it's got a cooker, doesn't have a, this model doesn't have an oven, but you can get ovens yes. certainly to go in them. That seems a bit over the top to having an oven, I think, in a, in a motorhome, but people can do that. They make them for them. Are you pleased with it? Um... <laughs> that says it all, doesn't it? <laughs> it wasn't my decision to buy it. Right. If you were I... to buy something afresh, then what would you go for? Well, I'd certainly something go for a bigger engine. This is a very heavy vehicle, and it's got the smallest possible engine that so can actually keep the wheels rotating. Right. So you are in second and third gear an awful lot of the time. So any rises, hills, and whatever. Any you? hills, it's a kind of okay, right into second, and whee! And away she goes, really. So, um, so in 40 my... is an average cruising speed on the level. Is it? Yeah, you can get the 60 going downhill and stuff. I've Gosh. discovered pumping the tyres up to the proper pressure, which is about 80 PS, 80 or 90 PS. Blimey, that um, helps. That makes a huge difference, because when we got it, it was at car right. levels of 30. 30. And, and it was like running around on, on, on balloons. Gosh. So, um, Richard, Richard, the three of us, three different vehicles. Mm. I feel I'm in the middle with a sort of not quite a motorhome, but not quite um, a people carrier, I suppose. Yeah. Although, because I can only carry two people extra other yeah. than me because I've opened it up. So now some people might look at yours and say it's not actually a van. What do you respond to that? Because what is it? It's a multi-person vehicle. It's an MPV. An MPV. So it can how I travel eight people including myself wow um but we, the rear seats fold down to make a bed yes um and that's what i use as a camper and that's what you use and and i think that's the great thing is it shows that you don't there's no one vehicle that you have to have or, or that you know you can have anything because i was contemplating using my car my just mm. ordinary estate car until i bought the van to do this yeah um it would i find this is a nice space because i can carry more yeah but that's quite a big car isn't it or a big multi-person vehicle carrier yeah yeah, yeah. yeah people carry basically yeah. I, i'm used to driving vans as you know so yeah. your size so to me i don't think it's that big no but i get into the wife's car and i think it's too small right so how you, you haven't had this very long so how are you finding the camping out and and the the van life oh so much fun yeah. so much fun i just love like we've come to this beautiful setting today yeah. we're gonna be sleeping here we're, you know, we're not gonna be having any beers or anything but you can imagine no. that sort of thing going on here and then we're gonna wake up early in the morning get a beautiful light again this i think <laughs> of this as being one of the perks of van life because you can't always find a place like this in the middle of nowhere you know, because I've been in industrial state, estates mm. and in uh, ordinary domestic roads, and and in a way that's how my van is is stayed to be a bit more discreet. Um, but when you find something, because we don't know who's going to come up here in the middle of the night, you know, there may be ravers or all sorts of boy racers or yeah. who knows. Uh, is that a worry for you? I'm not worried about it. I mean, I always try and do my research and check for places and I look where other people are camping out as well yeah so I like to think I do my research and I've got a good idea where I'm going and what to expect but there is always that that chance and it's, it's the just... freedom isn't it it's the freedom and that and the closeness with nature I'm just watching a bird I can't see it on the camera but a crow. a crow flying by it's just that you're you know you're with the elements now Nigel was saying oh yeah but if you really want to get with the elements you need a tent but if it's really cold, if you've got 
worries um, if you've got not the ideal place the van is just so much more adaptable mm. I mean I, I, I've done a lot of sleeping in a tent as well but I've always had to when I walked through Dartmoor I had to stop an hour before I needed to because you have to set the tent up and get yourself yeah. going there's these especially yours it's just you park up you jump in the back and you're asleep yeah or you can just make park sure up make a cup of tea yeah open the door look at the view and and it's great the light is dropping fast now anyone know what the time is quarter past eight we're filming this in middle of may so the light is dropping fast haven't yet had a chance to eat but we're so lucky sheltered on the wind we've had so many windy days sheltered here from the wind it's just it's just gorgeous looking forward to the night ahead i've made a salad for julia and i she's she's only come up to to eat bring little joe gonna eat the salad and then probably bed down for the night well i suppose if you live full time in a van then you might well witness a number of sunsets in exotic locations but to me as an occasional van lifer tonight's display not only amazing but is down to pure luck it's just simply spectacular and something sadly i can never enjoy from my terraced house so therefore it must be savored to the full Well, it's time to go to bed now. Actually, what is the time? It's just coming up to midnight and it's time to come to go to bed. It's been a fantastic experience so far. Thoroughly enjoyed it. It's lovely to have had a meal there. Sorry to do a lot of filming um, with the others, but uh, it was great to go in Nigel's camper van and spread out around the table, made it really nice. And when you've got a bunch of people, isn't that fantastic? I guess we could have been outside that would have been wonderful as well a few cars have come and gone but nothing really to worry about um feel very secure and very safe so richard's gone to bed in his vehicle nigel and emily uh, nigel's daughter have gone to bed in theirs and i'm gonna set up my bed now in here and i'm going to bed down for the night and i'll probably be getting up really early and I'm hoping that we have a lovely day tomorrow. So, better get on with it. It'll get nice and warm. Perhaps, if you do this sort of thing all the time, you might get a bit blasé about standing transfixed by the dawning of another day. I'm not sure that I could completely take for granted such a magnificent spectacle. It's humbling. Richard and Nigel slept through the lot, missing out. Perhaps they valued their sleep more. We had been up late after all. But I couldn't help myself, particularly with all the beauty of creation around. Well, that alone was worth waiting for. Waking up as if the whole world is yours another car just popped up um, to see the sun rise as well funnily enough they hadn't stayed here overnight They're sitting in their car at the other end it's just it is just heaven 
when you get it right. This is not the same as it was when I woke up in an industrial estate in Plymouth, so it's not always like this. But listen to that. Coffee, I think. While the kettle slowly brought the water to boil, I needed to get ready for the day ahead. Another van-related adventure beckoned. Before I leave, there's just time for a final look at a landscape that even now I feel would be so familiar to our ancestors. Let me tell you this, as a day vehicle, my van is brilliant. You see, sometimes we only have an hour spare, and when we do, Julia and I can meet up and have a bit of a picnic, often just at a moment's notice. This is such a lovely spot. The other spot was nice, but there was model aeroplanes flying around, which was going to be noisy. We've got real aeroplanes flying around. <laughs> anyway. Instead. Oh well. Kettle is on. Just dropping the sponge. Now, I have got in the cool box some egg and bacon for me, but you don't like egg, do you? No, there's only one way I like it, and scrambled, and that's too messy right now. Oh, right. Eggs. Lovely. So, I got you some tiger bread. Now, I don't oh, eat um, commercial bread, as you know. I'm a bit mm. fussy. So I'm just going to have eggs and bacon, but you're going to have a bacon... I'm going to have a bacon butty. A bacon butty. I forgot to bring any, uh, any um, ketchup, because sadly I do like a bit of ketchup. Oh, right. Butty, there but... might be ketchup in the van, actually. Ooh, there lucky. might well be. I mean, I don't know. I can't remember. So, do you want me to put some of this in? Oh, yes, please. The van's been great for Richard, really good for Richard. Been able to get out further, have nights out in the van, and be able to film first thing in the morning, get the sunrises. I know he loves the morning so much, so to be able to be out and about, almost pretty much in his element, <laughs> he's met more friends because of the van. He's inspired people to get the vans as well, and <laughs> it's quite a few people who have, uh, well, I think I'm going to do it now, myself included. I'm like, oh, I really want a van. I don't think I could get one as big as this one. I don't know what Richard would be doing without his van now. I think he'd feel lost, trapped, tethered. Um, I don't know. Um, I have a spatula somewhere, but I'm going to try and do this without the spatula. is spitting rather a lot. There we go. Yeah, it should slide off now, shouldn't yeah, it? Yeah, it should do. Just try not to get the fat. Oil, yeah. Whee. And the crowd goes wild. Here we are, look, there's a, there's a ready-made seat here. Just a little away from the road, sheltered a bit from the wind. It's just picking up. It's been absolutely gorgeous. But uh, I brought my book with me. One of the things I love to do is read. I am an avid reader and, and anyone... It's always when you start filming that that's when all the vehicles come. It's been really, really peaceful. Uh, anyone who's watched my videos will know that I have um, an, a huge number of books. I'm, I prefer to read than I do actually watch screens. I don't have a television. Um, but most of my reading is done inside at home. I think for me, the van, one of the great things that it offers is that ability just to get away from the four walls, take it easy, <laughs> get close to nature, hear this soundtrack and absorb 
books and information. And the funny thing is, of course, if you sit down and start doing effectively nothing, you know, you're reading, the wildlife starts to come out again because it's seen you arrive, it's aware of you. And even as I've been filming, when I just sat down and, and I get st stationary, the birds are louder, more butterflies, more insects, suddenly you're aware of all of that. It's just, it is joyous. So I want to do lots more reading, a lot more research and all of that. And I can't think of anything better than coming out on a beautiful late day like this and just absorbing the sunshine, the atmosphere and the knowledge. The looks people give you as they drive past is just hilarious, absolutely hilarious. I've got some orange tomatoes. Mm, mind, have I had yeah. one? Well, they're there. there to be used. Thank you. This is the life. We haven't had such great weather for a while, so one's just got to maximise it. This is a particularly scorching day. Hello. Where are you stopping? <laughs> Julia and I are off to see Tim Tricker, our friend in East Sussex. He's been bitten by the bug also, ever since he had a nice cup of tea in the back of my van down in Plimpton in Devon, only a few weeks ago. We've arrived in Crowborough, somewhere in Crowborough, in a secret location where Tim Tricker secretly lives in this road here, in one of these anonymous looking houses. and. Tim, you must be very excited. Very excited this morning, off to pick up our van. No, excited because I'm here. No, no. <laughs> excited because the lovely Because Duke. I'm here. Hey, <laughs> we're all here. Yeah. yeah. Where did you come from? Nowhere. Didn't you see I came out that pixie hole over there? Oh, that lovely tree. I wonder who lived in there. Yeah. yeah. So you're <laughs> off to buy a van. Off to buy a van. You've already paid for it. Is that right? No, put a deposit on it. Are oh, you put a deposit on it? You got paid the, the rest? balance. Paid the balance this morning and then we're picking it up of the van so this is, we're going to leave everybody in suspenders until we actually see what the van is because yep. from what i understand it's a dreadful old rust bucket that was about a yes. hundred pounds runs on steam and runs <laughs> on steam um so very much looking forward to that but it's you live in crowborough and this is up in Near sterling Brown. scotland that's the one. It's a long, long, long this way away. We're, we're going to have a break at Craigie B's house. Right. <laughs> he doesn't know this. It's not really up no, there, is it? It's, it's a Brands Hatch. Brands Hatch. And they've used it as Brands Hatch to... Be a pace car. Yeah. There we... And it's had it. I don't know why Why spend the money on it. So, but right. We have. We're going to go in your car. Yep. And we're going to record the event. So it's going to be exciting. and get the van we just paused at a lovely pub uh, for a lovely lunch thanks so much tim that's, for bringing us uh, to the the pub from hell it was the pub from hell we I won't mention the name because i just feel that's uh, you know i feel that the poor bloke people in there have no clue what they're doing that nope. they wouldn't have a, an idea but it wasn't it wasn't great was it julia sadly not and i do feel yeah. that the minute we walked in we had an inkling it wasn't going to be the greatest experience and um, it, the food was tepid the stuff that was on the menu wasn't on the plate and the plates were hot but not hot but not but exactly <laughs> and you've experienced the public lose well both the ladies and and I went and I didn't go because the look on your face when you came back <laughs> but anyway we're running late we must go we and pick this late. van up Let's move on. Take the next right onto Red Hill Road, then continue straight onto Ash Road. Happy, we Tim. Very. Now we've got away from where we were dining and we've arrived to pick up a van to be converted. Very nice looking van. TT, an Audi There's TT. There's going to be an Audi TT by the time I finish <laughs> with it. 
What do you think, Julia? I think it's cool. I mean, needs work, but needs work. Tim's the right man for that. Tim knows what he's doing. A bit jealous. Yeah. yeah. Everyone's getting these cool vans. I want a van. We'll have to get, get you a van next. Yeah. yeah. That would be perfect, wouldn't it? Yeah. I can see you being a vanny. <laughs> Sweet vanny Adams. Sweet vanny Adams. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, I think Tim's just got to do a bit of paperwork so that he is then becomes the owner, do the last, handing over the last tut and take me, and uh, he will be the proud owner of the van. Hopefully, this will get him back to uh, Crowborough where he lives. <laughs> Deed done. The deed is done. We are now the owners of a van to be converted. Have you been inside yet? No. Let's have a little gander inside the van. Here we are. Wow, yeah. So, it is bigger than mine. It is, You can yeah. certainly stand up, can't you? Yeah, we'll, we'll have that bulkhead out. We'll get all this redone. And... Happy? Happy, happy. Good investment. I think so. Just got to find out if it starts. <laughs> <laughs> it starts. First time, Tim. It started. Well, the excitement and the work starts now, doesn't it? That's it how does. it's That's going how to it rock. Yeah. It, it feels all right from my perspective. Does it drive okay? It drives fine. Yeah? Absolutely fine. Um, when when Rachel and I came up take to the next left, take the next left onto St Clair Hill Road. Stereo. Um, when Rachel and I came up to drive it, it started and it drove absolutely fine. In a quarter of a mile. Continue for one mile. Well, I think it's very exciting, Tim. You've got a project. You've got a van. Yeah. And it's going to be great for me to follow the progress over the next 12 months or however long or however short it takes. And I can't wait for us to go camping somewhere like I did yesterday with Nigel and Richard Suggett and we just have a jolly old time because that is what it's all about. How about that? Tim has joined the ranks and I'm so excited. It's going to be interesting to see what he does with that van. And I thoroughly enjoyed my time up on Sisbury Ring with the boys. That was great. And of course, going out with the lovely Julia and having just an impromptu lunch or brunch or whatever it is, uh, is fantastic. As I said at the beginning, I'm changing the format. So these are going to now be longer videos made over a number of days rather than trying to put out lots of short ones. And there's going to be a membership area. So if you are one of those people who want to see a little bit more, then you're going to be able to do that. There's going to be live streams. There will be behind the scenes footage, uh, any outtakes and things I'll bung in there and even a little chat about things coming up. So that will be in the membership area. There's a join button that you can press on the YouTube channel. So there we go. It's very exciting times. We've got the sun with us. I've got my wonderful van. I'm gonna go further afield and do all this exciting stuff, hopefully, and I would rather hope that you will come with me. So don't forget to subscribe and of course, uh, press that net bell notification thing and you'll get notified every time I pop up a video. Right, I've got to get the old brain box going and think up what the next video is. More bald exploring on the channel. But until next time, take care, look after yourselves and bye for now. Bye-bye, bye. -bye. bye.